morning, and this is Coach's Corner with men's basketball coach, Matthew Driscoll. So let's start with the win against Lipscomb. You had junior Brad Hogbrook made the game-winning point in the last second of the game, and it made 72-70. Can you describe the moment when you saw that ball go into the net? And what happened? How did you react? You know, it's, it's funny you said that because one of our assistants said he didn't see it go in because I was standing in front of him. But I recall being seated. And later when we watched the tape, I was seated when that ball actually went in. The referee was in front of him. But, uh, you know, what happened was we had actually got up to a 16-point lead, and they did a great job fighting back. And our guys did a great job persevering and enduring through that time. And we were able to, to do something that we planned on doing, fouled a particular person. They only made one free throw to tie the score. We have set situations we do at the end of the game, much like Belmont here when we won. Mm -hmm. Brad was going to go one-on-one. -on -one get to the rim, and then Matt and Andy were going to come in from behind and try to get a tip in. At Belmont here, Matt got the tip in, Brad missed a shot. At Lipscomb, they never left Matt, so Brad actually got a free run to the rim, and when Brad got a free run to the rim, made the layup with about 1.2 on the clock. Yeah. And Matt and Eni did a great job. The one thing we never do is we never let people get free shots to the rim at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. We always want to have a body in front of them. And Matt actually made their player, Josh Slater, dribble the ball twice, which enabled the clock to actually run out. And by the time he chucked it, the clock was out. It missed anyway. So it was a great victory for us, especially on the road. You know, we're, we're four and three on the road and two and five at home. Mm -hmm. So we need to change that badly. Mm -hmm. um, going back to last week's game against JU, Stan Janesco, fell hard and he uh, ended up in the hospital. How has his recovery been coming along? He's much better from a physical standpoint, meaning day to day, as far as what he does naturally, going to school, sleep and eating, all those kind of things, he's fine. But the physical part of it is him going out on the floor. Yesterday, he actually tried to do some more things to try to increase where it would be in his comfortability level, soreness, tenderness, those kind of things. And what's odd about this is it's, a, it's an injury, internal injury. So it isn't like it's a lump or something you can see going down or, or something you could see healing. It's something in, internal, which makes it a whole lot different. So. He's doing things day to day. He's increasing more day to day, but really it depends on his soreness and how much he can do as opposed to how he progresses. So we're hoping it, obviously we love to have him back. He's a senior and we're winding down the year, but we obviously never want to put him in harm's way either. Exactly. Well, we hope the best for him. You had a pretty good game against Lipscomb again, and you had senior Uni Suka, who has taken over for Janeska since he's been out. He had a 23-point game, and that's the first for an Osprey to have a uh, more t than 20 points in a single game. What made him so effective that, on the court that day? You know, he really came out hot, and I don't know if it was because he started. Of course, he was our leading returning scorer from last year, so he's put up big numbers before. So it wasn't like it was new for him to be out on the floor at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And he came out, he made his first, and then we ran something for him. He made his second. Next thing you know, he made a couple more. And you could see that he was kind of in the flow a little bit, and that continued throughout the game. And he really pushed the envelope as far as what he needed, what he wanted, and our guys did a great job finding him. You know, when a guy gets hot, the one thing you want to do is find him. When a guy makes one, you want to see if he's hot. So you want to try and find him on that next play to see if you can't get him another shot just to see if it's maybe his night or it's, it's his particular time of the game where he's feeling good. So I really think our team did a great job finding him as well. And as far as him being a first 20-point scorer for the year, what's really odd about that is we don't have anybody that averages double figures on our team. Mm -hmm. And we're really spread out. We really, on any night, anybody can lead us in scoring. Mm -hmm. And it's been proven because we've had so many people. So it's great to see that finally somebody got 20, especially when we won. Yeah, exactly. You also played Belmont, but just couldn't overcome those nine three-point shots made by Belmont's Ian Clark. But you all kept battling, which was good, You made, and it ended up being 70-56. What has been your message to the men for such games like that? You know, coming off of back-to-back high-intensity games, what I mean by that is when you play high-level teams like Belmont, Lipscomb, East Tennessee State, Campbell, Jacksonville, Mercer, all those teams that have been picked to win the league. See, us, Stetson, Florida, Gulf Coast, they always put us down at the bottom. We're, you know, we're picked to be you know, bottom dweller, so to speak. When you play high-level teams and when you move up the ladder, same thing we were at Baylor. We were competing against high-level teams there. You've got to bring it every single night, but the second game, you've got to go to even another level. They start out, Clark hits his first three threes, and when, you, when you're a player and when you hit your first three threes as cleanly as he got those looks, the rim goes from this to this, and it looks like everything's going to go in. We made some great runs. <clears throat> 
excuse me, in the first half, it was 26-21. We missed a wide open three, could have cut it to two. And they had been dominating us. They shot 70% to start the game, but they were only up nine. So we knew that it wasn't going to keep lasting, and we knew we were going to stay in the game and be able to make a run. Then in the second half, we made another huge run, cut it to, cut it to eight with the ball with a chance to go to five. We miss. They go down. Ian Clark hits three, goes up to 11. We cut it back down to seven with the ball. We miss, they go down, Ian Clark, another three goes up to 10. So after a while, we talked about this earlier, you can only make so many runs within your own mind. And after a while, just, it just starts wearing on you. And now when you're playing a first place team in the league and you're mentally being worn down, it's sometimes it's hard to overcome it a third or a fourth or a fifth time. So our guys fought, our guys you know, did some good things, but when a guy makes nine out of 11 threes, that's, that's pretty impressive. And we did not do a very good job on him at all. Well, you all are done traveling for the uh, week. You have a game uh, this weekend or this week against Stetson on Thursday, and then Florida Gulf Coast on Saturday. So, for these upcoming games, can you describe the preparation that you will have for these games? The one thing about being at home, obviously, it allows you to get back into the flow of classroom. Allows you to get back to the flow of eating what you normally eat. It allows you to get back in the flow of sleeping in your own bed. And as crazy as that sounds, it actually is a pretty good thing. Mm -hmm. And again. We're two and five at home, which is very disappointing from my aspect. The, the, the one thing you want to do is win your home games and steal some road games. And we've been the opposite. We've been winning road games and stealing a couple home games. So we need to change that immediately. We have six games left, four of them at home, which obviously is, is an advantage usually to the home team. But the other thing, too, that's important is we're always battling every single game now. And if you look at our conference, 10 wins leads it. And then to get to eighth place, Someone's going to have seven or eight wins, maybe nine wins in the eighth place. Mm -hmm. So there's only a couple of games that separate you from top to bottom, which makes seeding all that much more different as well. So we really have to understand that, take it a game at a time, really have to do a great job. Guarding the arc is huge for us. We're third in the league in three-point field goal defense. We're fourth in the league, third in the league, but really fourth statistically in field goal defense, which is great. Mm -hmm. And we've got to continue to hone in on that and understand that's our identity. And also this weekend, two big weekends. Mm -hmm. You know, we have... United Way, obviously, a big fund for United Way, and we want to serve. We do not want to be served. We want to be people that serve, and we want to help raise money for United Way. And then also, we have breast cancer awareness. Well, we're going to come in and do some things for that on Saturday as well, too. So it's a big weekend for the community and the school and for our program, and we need to take care of it one game at a time starting Thursday night. Well, you always have a big crowd at the men's game, so let's – Let's hope you do well. Again, Thursday, the Ospreys will take on Stetson at 745, so make a note. Thank you, Coach Driscoll. I really appreciate your time and talking with us. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate it. You know, students have been great, good. and we really need their support. And the one thing I've noticed being on the road, no one has as good a student support as us. Some people may have some more fans. Mm -hmm. They might have a bigger fan base right now, but nobody has a bigger student fan base than ours. And ours is averaging about 750-ish. Of course, we had 1,900 and some against JU, but our fan base for our students is huge, which is a great thing for, the, for, for our school to understand because the more school you have and the more victories you have, the greater it is for everybody in the long run. And we need to continue to build upon that. And that's always great for recruiting, too. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. All right. Well, thank you again. Have a great day, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you, too.